<laughs> okay, the contract is like yesterday, so we do a conversation about half an hour or so. I do not have to introduce my style uh, again, but maybe you give me want to give me some hints. What if? Uh, what should I know? What should I be aware of? Okay, um, it's a group of people who manage... No, no, no your personal um, style personal in style. our conversation. Okay. Um, Give me an introduction into your personality. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I like to kind of think things through, so I like to reflect. Yes. Um, I like to be able to say, look, I don't understand that. Could you explain that differently? Yeah. Um, and just go with the flow. Good. And you are confident that I will do that? Is this, as far as me, you, you have uh, watched me in the conversation? Yeah, or? yeah. Okay. If, if it's not satisfying enough, just tell me. Mm. Uh, yeah. If I can, I'm happy to adopt so that we find a common shared style here. Okay. Yeah, now start with your issue. Now it's a word is good, yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, my issue is I have to train a group of people mm -hmm. in, in how to deal with conflict when passengers come up and they're angry. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to be able to give them the tools and the resources to be able to for them to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, what we do is we um, give them conflict management training. Mm -hmm. My issue is it may not always be necessarily conflict. What what uh, and what is conflict management training in your house? Um, conflict management training is if a person comes up and they're quite angry. How do how do we as individuals deal with it? And you 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 work with role play and discuss it, or yeah. what do you do when both you... role play and discussing it? Oh, okay, so that's yeah. what you call conflict management training. Mm. Okay. Yes, so you did that so far. Yeah, yeah, and what I've done so far is only through my own initiative is this through actually it's more about effective communication so I'm not sure if that's right or not mm -hmm. what made you think that uh, the situation as you did uh, how you did it so far is somehow not enough or, or should be changed what what triggers that um, what triggers it is um, because I've used some of the um, parent-adult-child theory, mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if it's the right concept to use. Oh, yeah, that's the way way to to think about it. But mm. have there been any events that gave you the trigger? Oh, we should probably change something on that. Um, it's it's actually something a new concept that I'm trying with this particular group. Um, uh -huh. So. It's really just by way of make, using my own initiative. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't gone back to evaluate whether it's right or not. And you already started something new? Yes. Or you're thinking about it? No, we started. And what, what did you make difference and before? Um, the difference is I've got them to look at not just conflict management. Mm -hmm. So not don't assume that every situation might be conflict. Yeah. So don't be guarded. Mm -hmm. Just be open to what's happening and looking at some of the tools that you might use, like listen to the passenger, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. And how was your experience with with your options? Um, the train, the trainers seem to like it. Um, I'm not sure whether the delegates are getting what they need out of it. So I'm just wondering what it is I might need to do differently. Mm -hmm. Um, your assumption is the trainers, as a, you are in a leads this program with yes, yeah. how many trainers? Um, about seven trainers. Seven trainers, and they are working worldwide or at some place? No, just locally at Heathrow. Just locally, and, and you have a direct evidence of what they are doing? Yes, because I've been observing. Or just reported to you? No, just I've been observing the trainers but I don't observe the delegates, so they train other people, frontline staff, and then they go out there and do their jobs. I'm not sure whether I understood the setting. Okay, the setting is, we have a group of trainers <coughs> yes. 
who are coming to train and yeah. I coach them on how to train this yeah. particular behavioural session yeah. mm -hmm. and then they have a group of delegates, mm -hmm. 12, and then they then now have to train the delegates. They do it at the spot? Yes. <coughs> mm -hmm. And you could watch what they do with the delegates? I haven't watched, no. But you got reports or a sense of atmosphere or how, from where do you get your information? From the, from the trainers. They report you? Yeah. Okay. And you say, I'm not sure whether the delegates are satisfied with what the trainers do. Yeah. From where does this hesitation come? Yeah. Um, I guess the hesitation comes from, it's difficult for me to measure how successful it is. Yeah for each individual, because yes. there's 54 of them, because their perception of what they've been trained mm -hmm. might be different mm -hmm. and how they're dealing with any conflict that they mm -hmm. might have yeah. in terms of this new concept that I've mm -hmm. put together. Okay. So you're not, you, you have more the assumption it's working fine, but you're not sure? Yeah. Yeah, not not you are thinking, oh, something is going wrong and do not know how to get information about it. More the assumption it's working fine, but you want to be more secure? Yes. Uh, so we are on the hor on one horizontal level now. Now it gets to the helicopter. Uh, how long are you dealing with these questions already? About a year. About a year. Mm -hmm. And did you, I, I guess you talk to people around about this. It's not the first time you talk about it. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Uh, what, what came out from this talk? So what, what reactions did you elicit? Um, from the trainers, it seems to be that the delegates are getting on fine. Um, what I tend to do in BA is look at best case scenario and worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. The best case scenario is when everything's going all right. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario is mm -hmm. if we have a disruption and it becomes critical and mm. we have passengers who get angry. Yeah. So that's it. That's really when it will be tested. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether we are on the same level. Do you, uh, your question, how can I be... Sure enough, that it's a good program. Yeah, yeah. With whom did you discuss it already? With the line trainers who work in that area. These are the people you trained? Yes. Okay. And what came out from this conversation? Um, the line trainers seem to think that the delegates are okay with um, what they've been trained, mm -hmm. but they haven't been tested to the maximum. They haven't they haven't had a worst case scenario situation mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's measuring how successful and how resilient they are when they're faced with conflicting situations. Mm. When I listen to you, my personal reaction is from my bubble of reality. Why is being so sure on issue? It's, it sounds as if they do a good job, they um, have the assumption it is working fine. As far as I know, up to now, no information said it's not going fine. Uh, why does this person uh, focus so much on being so so much sure? For who wants it? From which frame of reference is that coming? I guess it's coming from my frame of reference, and the reason. Um, it's coming from my frame of reference and I need to check how sure I'm mm -hmm. being is because next year there's an expectation that I will do some more behavioural um, training around effective communication mm -hmm. rather than conflict management. Mm -hmm. So until I get um, evidence, if you like, mm -hmm. that it is working mm -hmm. and they have got the tools mm -hmm. to be able to deal with situations, aggression, whatever it happens to be, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's my mm -hmm. You say it's your, your personal frame of reference mm -hmm. that you want to be very sure. Mm -hmm. For what is that necessary? I guess to make sure that the training is robust. Bust? Robust. It's um, robust. Robust. Yeah. 
Yeah, I understand all this, but compared to that, you could say, okay, we run it as long as it's working fine, it's working fine, uh, and we only do something if we have hints that something is not working fine. But somehow it seems to me as if you want to have more security. That seems, at the first glance, in my frame of reference, reasonable. Mm. You, you understand what yes, I'm saying? Yeah. Is let let me jump to another point of comparison of frame of references. Is that a um, is that a specific is a component component of your personal style that you want to be very very sure Probably. of things? Probably yes. And this is also true in other areas, or specifically in organizational context or professional context. I Are there differences, or is this all the same in all on all stages? I think it's probably the same. All, so, you, so it's a, a pattern mm. that is important in many worlds and and stages. Mm. Okay, and that's not new. It's, it's, it's your, as long as you can think back, or mm. when did it start? Have there been times when it was different? No. No. Back to my question, how do people react when you want to discuss with them security uh, being um, very um, sure that it's a, it's a robust training? How do they react when you, since one year you said you have discussions with people around them? Yeah. How do they react normally? They seem to think that the training has equipped them um, for what they need to do. Mm -hmm. No, not when you talk. My question was not uh, uh, how do you think, how do they think about the training, mm. but how do they react when you involve them in discussions okay. about security? Okay. Um, how do they react? Um, there's some concern about some of the situations they have to deal with because some of the situations can be potentially quite aggressive. So there is some underlying concerns with people when I talk to them. These are the delegates. Yes. My question, maybe I was not clear about my question. Since when and with whom did you have a conversation like this? With the line trainers. Yeah. And uh, I guess you um, insist on security when you talk with them as well as yes. you insist with me. Yeah. My question is how do they react to that? To, to, to your wish to be so secure? Right, okay, yeah. Um, I don't get any reaction. I don't get any reaction from them. We have a conversation yeah. about, you know, are you comfortable? Yeah. And they seem to be quite comfortable with what I'm asking them, so they don't react in any particular way. So, when I look at your frowning, <laughs> it may be reflecting that they do not understand what the hell is going on with her, that she's... She's uh, in that issue over and over again. Mm -hmm. Is, could that be? Mm, I hadn't thought of it like that actually. Mm -hmm. We certainly uh, could now go into asking questions like uh, what was the evaluation of the former program? Who needed that? Who was satisfied or not satisfied with that? Is it the same with the new program? Did you everything you could do? Mm. But I guess these are kind of questions you know yourself. Mm. Uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that it's, it gives you a something in addition when we discuss this here now. Mm. What do you think about that? Is that true? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> not under, not hundred no. percent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, looking at our conversation, so mm. there are two, two people, you and me, and looking at me, at this me down there, the, no, the person, he has a problem. Mm. You know? He's not convinced of the, uh, um, why this is a problem. 
and if he turns into it, he is running for 100% mm-hmm. in a field where you never know where 100% is. Mm-hmm. So he better refuses to do that because it's, a, it's um, um, struggling, it's an endless struggle. Mm-hmm. But when he refuses the, the question, then she might be might feel rejected because somehow it's important for her. But he does. But you, you don't understand how it is important for her. Mm. So this, yeah, you know, if I state it this way, it's a kind of dilemma. Mm. Yeah, I either could try to work hard on finding out how you can come to hundred percent. And for me, yeah, I don't understand why this is necessary. But I'm at the first glance, I'm ready to accept just your goal. Mm. But I feel like we can struggle, Jay, maybe they would say try hard, we could struggle on that, but I do not have a feeling of competence we ever could get anywhere mm. in that direction. Mm. Do you have that feeling, uh, feeling that you, we could really get to a point where it's, it's okay and finished and satisfied? It's probably the most big perfect job ever. <laughs> <laughs> How was it an answer to my question? (laughs) (laughs) Not exactly. (laughs) Not 100%. I'd have to work on it. (laughs) My my question was, do you you feel confidence that if we would try to do something, that we could re- really reach a point, it, it's, there is a satisfying solution? Yes. You feel that? Yeah. Oh, I don't feel that. I don't. No. I feel invited into a race where there's no, no really goal. Mm. I could race, race, run and run and run, and I never know when I am reach the goal. How do you react when I tell you that? <laughs> Uh, that's probably accurate. Yeah, that's probably an accurate statement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How does this go together with you, with you, with you saying you are confident that a goal is reachable? Because I, I can share this reality. Mm. I, it's not obvious for me. And yeah, how, how, but you say yeah, you are confident that a goal is reachable. Yeah, it the yeah. yeah. Yeah, what? The goal. Yeah, I can identify with what you're saying actually. The, the goal is never, it feels to me the goal is never reachable. That's how it's how can you be confident then? Yeah, okay. Hmm. This feeling of being confident would be an an invitation into an endless running. Yeah. Hmm. So I would not trust this feeling as a as a, a, a judgment about reachability. Hmm. And still, I'm sure, uh, it's not just nonsense you try to do. You mm. try to solve anything mm. or, or find a, a, a state you're, that is satisfying or calming for you or whatever. Mm. I'm not saying it's not a real problem. But the way the question is uh, coming up between us, for me, it's a kind of non-solvable mm. way to frame it. Mm. And I certainly have to reject to go with you into a non-solvable, non-solvable mm. solution pattern, because then we both have. I only share your 
bad feelings or your fruitless hope if you run enough you will reach something mm -hmm. but i do not want to, want to abandon you with whatever you try to solve by stating this kind of problem mm -hmm. You understand what yes, I'm saying? Yes. How does it feel for you? At the moment, I'm sitting here feeling uncomfortable about it. Mm -hmm. um, about what, especially? About the feeling of keep trying and trying and trying. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about what I'm saying that I do I refuse this way to state a question mm -hmm. because for me it's, it's a non solvable way to state it mm -hmm. and I want to refuse that but not abandon you with mm -hmm. what you want. Mm -hmm. Besides that, what I did not yet understand. How do you feel with that when I split this? Yeah. So the dilemma kind of stating your situation and the solidarity with you. Mm. How do you feel with that? Yeah, I feel okay with the not abandoning. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's a case of if it if I'm not being abandoned, mm -hmm. what do I need to do differently in order to be okay with that other feeling? I'm not sure whether I understand stood the grammar of your sentence. Would would you repeat it please? In terms of the abandonment, yes. right, you're not going to abandon me, that feels comfortable. Yes. Yeah. But in terms of the other, yeah. right, um, I know that I do have a sense of sometimes kind of rus rushing, rushing, rushing to yes. get something done. Yeah. And I need know I need to learn to let go of that yeah. and think differently mm -hmm. about what do I need to do in order to achieve something. Or sometimes it's a case of this is in satisfactory enough. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's a case of if you're not abandoning me, yes. what do I need to do differently? So you equate with feeling secure in the relationship and trusting the way you go with us without knowing the way exactly. Mm -hmm. You're equating this with knowing exactly what to do differently. Um, I don't think I'm equating it. I think what I'm doing is inviting you i guess to say okay maybe you could think about something different mm -hmm. yeah. uh, maybe to think to do something different is an okay option mm. but it still feels for me that on a next level we do the same thing unless okay. we have found a good option uh, security is not possible and we are running again on the next floor. Okay. You, you understand yeah, what I mean? I do understand what you mean. Okay, so it would, as long as we are within this kind of dynamic, mm. no matter we love, which level we choose, we, will, we do not come out of the dilemma area. Mm. And it's, you're saying it's always going to be a dilemma? Perhaps? Probably. I don't know whether always we only yeah. now had yeah. <laughs> one, two, or three levels of it. Yes. But uh, I trust my feeling when you say, okay, I, I offer you an option that would, in my frame of reference, be an, an exit door. Saying, okay, um, I, I'm not abandoned. Somebody is solidary with, we, with me. Also, we do not yet have an, an option on how to be secure by knowing everything. Mm. Mm. And you answer with going back into the old, fra old frame of reference, mm. I think that's fine as long as we are sure we have a mm. yeah. on that level yeah. a solution. Yeah. Yeah. And then it feels for me I'll back in the old system. You're right, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And I see, I don't know whether it's possible for you and your frame of reference because I do not all factors that make your mm. frame of reference uh, could, but I offer you an option and, and maybe by your reactions we find out more about this frame of reference uh, when when I tell you and all and suggest to do the same thing with your trainers mm. 
to say, uh, can we have a contract that if we get problems in this training program, that you do not abandon me, and I am not the victim at the end, you are solidary with me and take responsibility for that. And uh, I don't have to be sure on this content level because we have a contract on being solidary. Mm. Could that be a solution for you? Yes, actually it could. Do you have a fantasy how they would react if you say this to them? They would say absolutely. I say I'm relieved. Yeah. <laughs> that you give up the old frame of reference. They are tied in. Uh, yeah. And if you... Maybe it doesn't work from now on and in all on all stages, but it's a, a pattern to reframe it for you. Mm. And you would experiment in the future mm -hmm. very often with this new pattern um, is there something that is um, damaged, or is there, uh, is there is there something that is speaking against trying this and waiting what happens? Can you say that question again? Um, in NLP, it's called ecological check. I offered you a slightly different frame of reference and invited you to experiment, experiment with it. We have experimented with it a bit in your, in your mind. And it seems, when I look at you, as if you, uh, it's a possible option for you. But I don't know what, what else is connected with these options. So my question is, if you try this and more more often switch frame of reference when you start running, say, oh no, I don't, why should I run when I, uh, feeling confident by going to run, mm. that's n not a valid way to orient myself, probably. Mm. So I let go. Instead, I find out with whom have I to talk about solidarity, mm. solidarity. Mm. Yeah, this is an an option in uh, what to do when you come to yes. this point. Yes. And my question is, is there something that's speaking against you trying and experimenting with this option? Um, probably history. Probably it's kind of historical mm -hmm. stuff, um, because it's something that I've always done. So. so it's just a habit. Yes. And today, is, is, if you if you change this habit by experimenting and trying and over and over again, finding out how it could be different, something that you will miss, what is important to you, what are something that cannot be solved? I'd love to do it. <laughs> I'd absolutely love to do it. And it's a case of retraining myself. Okay. Yeah. You, you don't see any obstacles, it's just changing habits. Mm. Yeah, sometimes that's the case. Mm. Some gelamata are just created habitually. Mm. They do not have a, a, a stabilizing function today. Mm. It's, it's just that when I come to this point, I activate ideas how to solve it, I activate a wrong feeling of confidence with this choice, and then I'm running, and after, <laughs> and after some time I find out it's not satisfying, I'm not reaching anything. Mm. And instead of stepping out of that pattern, you try, you, you ex, it exaggerates the old non-solving pattern. Mm. Okay. Somebody who knows you very well, from maybe, maybe several people on several stages, who would have listened to our conversation right now. Do you have any idea how they would look at it and react? And what they would say to you or to me or to the situation? They would say, thank you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because they're relieved? 
Uh -huh. and, and when they look at you, what, does, what would they say? Not only... That's not my, my first goal to relieve others. <laughs> mm, <laughs> but it's wonderful when it happens, when you relieve. What would they say concerning you? They would probably say, how long have we been telling you this? Pardon? They'd probably say, how long have we been telling you this? Okay, so that's a problem, man. Eh? Mm. If you if you do now, you go more in this direction. You, you give them right. Also, somehow they were wrong because they didn't tell you that this, it's a dilemma. Mm. They just gave you another advice. Mm. Mm -hmm. Could it be a solution? Also, they might think, "How long have we been telling you this?" Probably yes. Mm. What did you? What was the picture over there? Oh, yeah, see this is the direction. Know. Have you any idea what the picture was? Yeah, it's, it's so historical, it's way back. Oh, okay. Mm. So, so, back screens. Mm. Okay. And all together on, on these back screens and stages, would they allow you to, to move out of this frame of reference? Yes, but I think there might be a pull back to it. Why should they do when they, when, when they allow you to, to leave this frame of reference? Why should they, be, should they be interested in pulling you back? Mm. I'm not sure, maybe it's my perception. Yeah, all is your perception. Mm. But in your perception, what, mm. what is the motivation you fantasize they have to pull you back? Um, I'm not sure. It just feels, at, as we're talking, that there might be a pull. Yeah. A pull? Pull. No, pull. Yeah. Almost like where you do something automatically and then you start to change. Mm -hmm. um, as we're talking, it feels like my fantasy is I'm wondering if there might be a pull back. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is no pulling back, it's just, uh, just uh, the power of habits. Mm. Maybe. We don't know. No. You, you can find out if you want to, to, to experiment with that. You, Watch what happens internally, and then you maybe you find out additional aspects that we could not uh, refer to now. Mm. Uh, leaving a space where we do not know what is entangled all that with all that is it does it feel like an an option to just to experiment more and identify situations when when you tend to go for running and you stop and say, let I try a different stage and different mode of problem solving. Absolutely, yeah. It, it feels like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so we ended up on a very different focus than you came in with. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's okay? You accept this change in focus? Yeah, because I recognise it's something I do because I've got a couple of projects mm -hmm. that I'm doing and I recognise mm -hmm. that's where I am. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it needs to be better than that. It needs to be better than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Can we finish now? Yes, okay. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Just go back, so leave your role. Observations, questions, comments. observation in, in, from the beginning because I look how you interact with the with the client with yeah. the other and and uh, uh, the 
the, the, the subject was outside of the... There was a, a triangle. Yes. With long sides. I don't know how... Yeah, to, yeah. You tell me what the <laughs> real terms are. Uh, in the beginning, so the subject was somewhere yes. further away from both of you. Mm -hmm. And then there was a switch when the triangle, all the sides came shorter. Mm -hmm. When the issue became more focused on the person mm -hmm. and the the the, the personal um, the pattern assumptions and patterns, whatever. Self organization. So there was a um, clear change in the in the setting. Mm -hmm. In in organization, very often when when there are discussions or or when 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 actually I'm doing some coaching. The, this there's there's an issue that mm -hmm. comes along and then slightly it, it goes towards um, an interaction between two persons mm -hmm. and just clearer than I never thought it before because we're looking at you you two uh, you moved you had the direct um, the direct uh, link with with the with the client. Mm -hmm. um. I found myself getting really angry and um, frustrated, more angry. And there were two things going on for me. There was something around um, the process of the individual, or the process between you that was mm -hmm. being enacted. Mm -hmm. And this sense of this, and I was thinking, God, is this ever going to end? Mm -hmm. So that was part of it. But for me, the organisational piece got lost, which is an issue about how you evaluate training interventions. And to me, the, the, the piece around it being behavioural and something about how do we know what the impact is of this in people's realities mm -hmm. and for me there's something about how in that role in that professional role does the client get the information from within the system and i felt it got very much around her and not enough about the systemic context and who talked to who about what and what it actually means and mm -hmm. how the organization thinks about evaluation mm -hmm. So I got, <laughs> and to me, that's that's part of the problem with training, mm -hmm. um, doing a piece of predetermined work, planting it out there. And then, of course, the person who's designed it is left thinking, where do I go with this? So for me, the systemic piece got lost a bit. Yeah, I agree. But do you have the feeling we could have worked on it here in the situation? Maybe I do. Maybe that's why I'm frustrated. Yeah. I wasn't in your seat, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So. I think uh, probably we, we really, co on a content level, there was, there could be discussed much. But uh, for me, it's so creating a, a dilemma situation instead, that is in the way, uh, was, uh, has had, had the first priority. Mm. And unless we do not step, uh, unless uh, this, this pattern is in the way, we cannot really discuss on a content level. So, I, and I, I not even did get valid information from her about the situation. I don't know whether there is a need to discuss it really on a content level. And that's very often uh, the case when you are in dilemma situation that you do not you do not get the information you would need. And you struggle without information. And then you're in the dilemma circle. Mm. There was one more piece of information I think I would have liked, which what I was hearing was, was about symbi symbiosis, really, as you described it earlier. So too much responsibility. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't know, because it's the piece of information I didn't know, was, was this the system stroking and encouraging too much responsibility? Who is the commissioner 
mm. of this training? What role are they in? What yeah. what are they? Because the piece that I heard was we don't know whether the training works until mm. worst case scenario. I'm thinking, yes. my God, they have to have a terrorist yeah. incident in your on a plane to mm -hmm. discover whether the training works. Mm -hmm. That's what mad. Um, so who is commissioning? What's their thing? Yeah. And that's just the one piece of information I would have liked. Yeah. yeah. And then it would have been clear that the, the system is mad. <laughs> or not. Yeah, I agree to all that on a content level. Yeah. Mm. I, I didn't feel like we, we are on a working basis that we could mm. head over all these mm. content, go, uh, uh, head to these content goals. Because they, mm. they've been, uh, uh, so the dilemma pattern was in the way. Maybe between us, maybe between her and her colleagues, and maybe between her and her uh, competence within the person. Mm -hmm. So we just, do not, I just do not know mm -hmm. how far she is really on the content level. But I didn't see any chance uh, to find that out because yes. I, I tried a bit. But whenever, whenever I tried, uh, the problems became more mm. than less, and information uh, developed more questions than answers. And then I, I uh, dif uh, experienced myself starting struggling. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the meta level to first deal with that pattern. I like the way you confronted that. I like the way that you confronted all these invitations mm -hmm. to get sucked into this systemic way of mm -hmm. that, that, that you constantly you, she constantly got into. Mm -hmm. I like the way that you then applied it specifically to the relationship and then took it out into and so then how does this relate into this particular mm -hmm. issue? So that it can start working with some of the content. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting way that you confronted that. See, for me, the struggle that I have is sometimes this information is missing because who I'm going to the information for don't even have the information. So there I am, given a piece of work. Let's not go back into the content now. <laughs> I think that the piece for me was, I hear you describe it as get struggling and then moving up to the meta perspective mm -hmm. and that that to me is really helpful mm -hmm. because i could feel the invitations to try and solve try and try try mm -hmm. try mm -hmm. but the way you move out in your process mm -hmm. and, and look and i guess make a decision to that there's something different more important here mm -hmm. um as i saw it but really helpful technique for me mm -hmm. and one piece of your sort of i almost felt like you would you were doing from a coaching perspective sort of adult reality mm -hmm. testing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there was one i don't think i've got the phrase exactly but I, i'd advise you not to trust your feelings yes. yeah yes. it was a yes. fantastic piece of content in terms of yeah. very gentle but actually mm -hmm. you may be going the wrong way here mm -hmm. yeah there was something about absolutely something about um I'm not convinced that that route is the right route, mm. and I'm not abandoning you. Yeah. Mm. And so you, yeah. I'm with you on this journey, and I'm happy to explore right. it, and that needs to be in a different way. Right. Mm. Mm. Differentiate between solidarity yeah. to the human and confronting the frame of reference. I not, yeah. will yeah. not step into a frame of reference that is not plausible to me. Because yeah, then yeah, I so cannot work. Describing that, you yeah. described that a lot. I don't, I don't, yes. I can't match. I don't understand. Yeah. Right. But not. It's a really gentle way, yeah. but really consistent. Yeah. I, I will uh, say something about this. One. I think we should next to dilemma talk because yeah. this yeah. was a good example yeah. for it. If if you only refuse uh, to step into the frame of reference, the person usually uh, feels refused as a human being yeah. mm -hmm. and then fighting for being not refused yeah. by creating more dilemma yeah. and this differentiation uh, to my experience is very important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so then we have a working by basis together look at the dilemma and i i did not uh, react angry not at all uh, mm -hmm. because my attitude is to dilemma of this kind is an honor to me that somebody uh, brings his dilemma 
frame of reference is into our relationship. Mm-hmm. It's not because he wants to, to kill famous teachers or something. It's just that they don't, they, they do not know how they reenact this reality and they do not know how to, to get out of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm invited to deal with it. And the way I feel that I'm invited, that is, I feel desperate, desperation. Mm. When I go, when I go on the invited level, we will end nowhere. When I do not go with the invited level, I don't know what to do, or we, maybe we get problems, relationship problems. And that, and, and then I feel, oh, that's a dilemma. Mm. And do not act within the frame of reference of the dilemma, but go on a meta level. Mm. Mm. Well, it's me, and I, I felt it um, when I was there, but I was really experiencing the same, that, that it's very cha- you're challenging, this process is very challenging, but in a kind of, it is gentle, mm. but it does, it, it's, this is my stuff actually about um, that you don't go where I think I would go, mm-hmm. you know, it's like you're going somewhere else and it's, it's really challenging. Could you describe how how I do it different than you would it's, expect yeah, maybe it? It's, um, it? Maybe it's about the, the issue, what starts as the issue, mm-hmm. or what I think you know, mm-hmm. is the issue, um, kind of goes away, but it's still hanging there somehow. And maybe that is the content. Yeah. But then you work at a much deeper level with the process of that person, mm-hmm. but it doesn't feel, um, it doesn't feel psychological or pathological, I'm not sure the word, mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like that. Oh yeah, we built a study group on dilemma frame of references, it's, I, I do not confront the person, no, I confront a, really a way of creating reality. Yeah, mm. it's so interesting, mm-hmm. and becoming a bit clearer for me actually. Mm-hmm. Mm. In the long run, and this is important, not, not, uh, I wanted, I had preferred to, to deal with the organizational issues, but the pattern came in between. It was just not possible to do it. But if we meet again, uh, we certainly have to find out whether when the dilemma pattern is not in the way, where we are really concerning this professional criteria for the uh, organization. This is certainly important. It, 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 it should not be a, permanent pattern always to have something in between. Mm. After a while then I would turn around and say, so let's first find out where you really are concerning all these content questions and uh, let's find together uh, a way to check these to be sure uh, that all the dilemma problems aren't just uh, uncompensation for not not knowing the tools or not knowing the organization. Mm-hmm. But I didn't have an, a, a, an, a hunch right now that this is a problem. But if it repeats like that, something is missing, suddenly. Mm-hmm. Um, one hint I, uh, that made me more confident in the idea uh, it's a dilemma pattern was her facial reaction when I asked her how her colleagues react. Mm-hmm. Obviously they are fed up with, with mm-hmm. f- fruitless discussions. Mm-hmm. And this, this was another hint for me, but uh, maybe when they discuss it instead of really discussing the content, mm-hmm. they get into this dilemma dynamic and are not satisfied. And, and neither in the relationship way nor in the content way and uh, she said they basically they are not reacting maybe that's their security that, reaction not, not not to say much because they don't know that how to decode that i started to get angry was when was when you asked that question yeah and i started to feel angry uh, and i you know i wonder I don't know. Maybe there's anger in in this in this dynamic from the. Oh yeah, possibly. Um, because it just it just. It's natural if you if you f- uh, feel 
um, anger is the reaction to the idea there is a discomfort and somebody is responsible for it. And when they are uh, drawn into conversations like this, and I have the idea, if you, you do it to me, and not to feel uncomfortable, you should change. That's, uh, then, and I do not know how to do that, I get angry. And that's right on one way, but this will not help her. This is another dilemma. When they get angry, they know that it will not help to get angry. So maybe they are angry and feel unsatisfied with it, or, or they stop anger, but they don't know what to do instead. Mm -hmm. So it's a dilemma. Again, no, no, no matter which way they take, it will not come to a satisfying solution. Mm -hmm. And this is why the anger is important for diagnostics, but it should not be used for confrontation. Yes. And, uh, if you follow the idea, uh, that makes me angry, and we have to deal with that anger, uh, this will not help much to understand the frame of reference within that this anger is produced. She is the protagonist of this frame of reference, but she is not the one uh, who intends to produce anger. Mm -hmm. She is the one who wants to solve a problem, mm -hmm. but adopts a dilemma pattern mm -hmm. that leads to frustration and anger. Not, but it's not her motivation. And we sometimes react as if it is the motivation of the other person. Mm -hmm. And our anger could help them to shift motivations. Mm 